carousels are one of the best types of posts to share on Instagram. They are really great at sharing your expertise. They are really great at connecting to your audience and they're really great for being shareable pieces of content, which means that when someone shares your carousel and they're sharing it to their audience or to their friend, your carousel is getting seen by more non-followers and getting more people to come into your world. And so in this tutorial, I want to share with you my Canva hacks to make sure your carousel posts are getting shared, seen and enjoyed and engaged with and not taking you forever to design. And stick around to the end because I'm going to share with you how you can get your hands on a free carousel template that has proven to be working wonders for those who have already used it. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I am a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how they can use Canva graphics, design and brand to grow their business instead of feeling overwhelmed and feeling their business is growing really slowly because design has the power to really catapult how fast you grow. And I want to show you how to do that a lot in today's tutorial. Make sure you hit like if you are excited to learn how you can make your carousel posts shareable, because if our posts aren't getting shared or seen or engaged with kind of wasting our time making them. And I know as a business owner, we don't have time to waste. So let's dive in. So first I want to share with you a couple of examples from myself and from my clients to give you an idea of the kind of things that you can do on your carousel posts. And as I speak to these, I'm going to speak to why these posts are working. And then after that, I'm going to go through and show you exactly how to create this design yourself. So this is an example of one of mine that performed really well. And you can see here, it is simple. It's got a really punchy title here. I didn't even need to do this section here if I didn't want to, but I wanted to just add a little bit more context. A huge part that's going to make your design succeed is not overcomplicating this first slide. Another thing that I'm doing here, which I'll show you how to do as well, is creating little animations on these posts. You don't have to do these, especially if it's not your brand style, but if your brand is a little bit playful, adding these little animations is very, very quick and easy and also add some visual interest into your designs. Something else that I like to do is creating what I call an infinite scroll. This idea that your posts and your carousel is seamless. So a carousel post, in case you don't know, is where on Instagram, you can post more than one picture. There is a picture and then you slide across and there is more than one picture. You can post up to 20 different pictures here. So this is a really great way for you to be able to share a wide range of content with your audience and build a lot of trust and share your expertise. But not only do we want people to share these posts with others, we want them to actually first engage with it and consume the content first themselves. And some ways that we can help to do that is creating what we call that infinite feel across the designs, which means that your design goes across multiple slides and it feels consistent as I swipe across. It feels really satisfying. And so with mine here, all I've done, which is, this is a template I'm going to give you, all I've done is just added this line, which is in the same place across all of my slides. And that line helps your design to feel really consistent. Another example is this template that my client Hazel has used where she has put herself here and also on this slide, she goes perfectly across both of these slides. I'll share with you briefly how to do this soon, but I've also got a full tutorial, so I'll share that with you soon as well on how to create that seamless look in between slides. But again, it just helps your design to feel cohesive and fun to scroll across. Or another way that we can do this is another one of my clients. She created this really great uh, ribbon feel, which I helped her to do in one of my programs, the Co-Creation Design Club. And it just meant that the design kind of felt really flowy and fun to swipe across. You kind of felt like you were like, oh, there's more. I'm keeping on scrolling. Like it just, just helps our brain to think there is more and I must keep swiping across because if people aren't going to swipe through your carousel, they're not going to engage with it or feel like they want to consume the content. And this is also another one from my client, Erica. And you can see that this design is relatively simple. There's less cohesion across the designs, but what is working is we've got simple text inside the carousels. It's not like paragraphs and paragraphs of text. You could have a paragraph or two, but I wouldn't go too wild because we don't want our text to be too small to read on someone's phone, which is where people are viewing these. And you can also see a really big point I teach quite regularly, which is with a carousel post, not only are people seeing your first slide, which they're seeing this slide in your actual grid. So you want to make sure this looks really great and on brand, but Instagram is actually going to offer people the second slide to them if they don't click on your slide the first time they see it. So if I'm scrolling my Instagram feed and I scroll past someone's carousel and I don't interact with it, but Instagram notices that carousel is actually doing quite well, it will actually re-offer me that carousel post, but show me the second slide in their carousel the next time I'm on Instagram. So I could keep scrolling the next day and I could see this post. And I'm like, haven't I already seen that? And I have, but it's actually showing me the second slide. So make sure you pay a lot of attention to the second slide in your carousel. Don't just make it really boring. Make it another really great hook piece. And the last example I want to share here is with another client of mine. And you can see here, we've got, the design is quite simple. There's nothing huge happening here. We don't feel like you need to overcomplicate the design, but it is clear, it is readable, and it, it is on brand. And I find that performs really, really well. And lastly, there is that call to action. And so that's a really big part too. So if you want someone to take action from your carousel, whether that is to share with their friends, oftentimes we actually need to ask for the share. I saw someone posting a reel on this today. They're like, you want people to share your posts? 
awesome too. And so like ask people, share this post with your friends, share this post with someone you think would find it helpful or give them another call to action, whether it's to save this post or listen to your podcast or download the freebie, whatever it is, even if it's just give me a follow or go and or comment X, Y, or Z, make sure that people know what that call to action is. Give them a next step. So now if we get into the design side of things, if you're designing a carousel post or any post on Instagram that is not a reel, I want you to make sure that you're using the Instagram post size. So if I type in here, Instagram, I've already, I've just pressed create a design. You want to look for this Instagram post option four by five. We don't want to use a square one anymore. That is now outdated. We want to use the four by five option. This is also great because it gives us more room to add our content to. And that will open up a design like this. Now, if you want to skip this step and start with actually having something, make sure you jump into the description below and there'll be a link to get this exact carousel template that you can just swap out your info and use it straight away. And so a big point of what I want to share is that you'll need to have a really great hook. If you don't have a great hook and large text on your first slide, you're going to have trouble capturing people's attention. They're scrolling. They're not looking to engage with you. They're looking for something that interests them. So having really large text is really, really important. So I'm not going to update the text on this carousel because that will waste your time and mine, but I am going to show you the things that are working on this design and help you to kind of add a little bit of an edge to it. So if you use this template or you're making your own, make sure that you make it fully branded. Having designs that are fully branded to your own fonts, your own colors, and your own brand vibe and elements is so, so crucial. I teach this across all of my different videos and in my courses. So make sure if you want more support with that, do let me know. There are links below to my courses for DIY to sell my biz if you're a new business owner, or if you're a more established business owner, the co-creation design club will be a great fit for you. The links for those are below. But in the meantime, if you if you have your brand sorted, you know what your colors and fonts are, this next step is going to be really easy. Just click on the background and change the brand color to whatever your brand color needs to be. You can change this font to being one of your brand fonts. I'm going to leave the font for now. Click on the font font name up here and you can change it to whatever you want to. And you'll actually note that if you see this down the bottom here, a change all option, I can change all occurrences of this font to my new font and it will just change it across the whole document without me having to go through and change every piece of text. You can actually also do the same thing with color. So I'm going to do that now too. If I click on this background color, click on my purple and then change it to my, my peach color here. I can also press change all and it will allow me to change all on this document. And so like I mentioned, having a, a really strong second slide is really, really important. Make sure it's either a really great tip, like often I share tips in these designs. You'll see this one here is set up to be tip one, tip two, tip three, tip four. And that's really, really great. Or I like to give like a really strong, like, this is why you need to care about this in this second slide. I have a whole video on the anatomy of what I think a carousel should look like. I'm going to link that here for you. So make sure you give that a look if you're feeling unsure about the content to go in your carousels. Next, you'll notice that this template already has the line involved. So I love to put a line or it's just something to, car to carry my, my design so it has that in infinite kind of feel. So if you don't aren't using my template and you'd like to do this yourself, all you need to do is insert a line. So I'm just going to press L on my keyboard and a line will pop up. This line is really great because it's something you can change the thickness of. It's something we can make into a dotted line. We can make into a rounded line. There's so many options for us. We can even add on an arrowhead or not. I prefer to have these lines really quite subtle and, and, and chic rather than having them really, really bulky and large like this. So I'm going to move my line weight much, much smaller. I'm going to take off the arrow because I don't want that for my own design. And what you can actually do is then grab this arrow and you can grab these little circular handles at the end and drag it across to go across your whole design. Now for me, I've just started it on this second slide. So I've kind of brought this across like so. And then all I need to do is click on this, uh, click on this line, press copy, go onto my next slide where I want it to be and press paste. And now I want to make this line go all the way across my design like so. And I'm going to use that exact same line and copy and paste it across all of my designs. Canva is going to paste it into the exact same spot. So don't move it. Otherwise it's going to be wonky across your slides. And then what I like doing at the end is actually finishing off that line. So I would then bring this to my end slide, bring this across and end it like so. If you want to, you can add another little arrow end, making a little circle or a square there. And that kind of just wraps up. It kind of helps people to know that this is the end. We've reached the end of our journey here. Thanks for watching, you know. Uh, I'm going to delete this now because I've already got mine on my own designs, but you can kind of see how that works. And so if you're doing your own design or you're using my template, make sure that if you move slides around, which you're totally welcome to do, that you move them around, but you change the lines to suit. So if you were using this as a, as a second or third or fourth slide, make sure the line then goes all the way across. Or if you are using this, or if you're like not using this last slide and this is going to be your last slide, move this line in and kind of make it finish up instead. So it kind of feels like it's complete.
Another way to help your, help your post to be shareable is to add in little animations. So what I like to do here, I'm gonna link a full tutorial for that here, where I'll go through this process a lot slower. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip through it really fast now. So if you're finding this is a little bit quick, make sure you watch this whole tutorial. I'll step it through a lot more robustly. But if you want to add in something just a little bit cute that, that that's a little bit wiggly, what you can do is just add in any kind of brand elements to so say I wanted to add in this sparkle. What I can then do is make this a lot smaller. Don't make your elements too large that they kind of overpower your text. Elements should just be like a bit of a, a like a, a little cute thing to look at rather than something that's taking away attention. So then click on your element, press this animate button up the top panel here and scroll down to the bottom of our animate options. If I go all the way down to the bottom, I can see this add on effects section. I love this wiggle one. So if I press wiggle, it's gonna put a little wiggle emotion on this little sparkle. But for me, I like to have this wiggle far more subtle. So I'm gonna bring this intensity and bring that right down to the bottom. And you can see it just wiggles a little bit. It's kind of subtle. It doesn't kind of distract attention, doesn't make things too hectic, but it just gives a little bit of a vibe here. If you choose to shit to do this on your slides, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you download this as a video file rather than an image file. Because if you download this as a JPEG or a PNG file, like you normally would in the Instagram post, this little sparkle will not be moving anymore. So you would need to press share, download, and download as an MP4 file rather than a PNG file. So MP4 rather than PNG, so that this then is a moving image in your Instagram feed. Another thing to consider is changing up your design between your different slides. You can see here between this slide, this slide, and this slide, they're actually quite different. They're not like vastly different, like having a totally different feel, but the layout itself is a little bit different. It feels like it's a fresh page you're going on. So I recommend just changing things up a little bit between your slides. Don't, don't feel like you need to do a whole new design. In fact, that's another tip for you is duplicate designs. Once you've done one of your posts, like even if I was starting this design from scratch and I didn't have the rest of these pages here, I could actually just right click or, or press these three dots and and duplicate my page and just work from here. I might make this heading a lot smaller. I might make this box a little bit taller and then fill this in with text. And now my design is pretty much done. I, I don't have to like just start from scratch with a new page. Like don't ever press new page and have a blank new page unless you need to duplicate past pages or click and select to copy a whole range of graphics and elements on one page right click and press copy, and then you can paste that onto a new page if you need to, but don't start from scratch, especially if you've already done one page in your carousel. Another tip I like to just mention too, is if you've done other designs in the past, copy and paste elements from those designs into this new design. You don't just have to copy and paste designs and elements from the current design you're working on. So change up your design a little bit, but don't feel like you need to like change up the colors, change up the fonts, change up everything, keep it relatively consistent so it feels cohesive, but add little bits of nuances of change so it feels a little bit different. You'll see when I get to the tips here, I've kept the, the design quite similar, but because of the changing text, it still feels a little bit different. And what I would like to do to kind of push out this template, like you see what I've done in this, this design here, I've just added like a little element here. I've added that wiggle effect to it. Um, I've added a little arrow in here, like just kind of change things up a tiny bit, maybe add a little bit of color into your design, just so it feels a little bit different and unique per page, but not so different that it feels overwhelming. So for me, for example, I like to add in elements that are relevant to what I'm speaking to. So say, for example, embrace imperfect progress. I sometimes literally, if I don't have an idea, I would just type in imperfect into Canva's element section and see what it comes up with. And you can see here, there's some really cute hearts here that aren't perfect really cute blobs that aren't perfect. If they have my brand style, I might try to use those. <laughs> like even this little carrot here, it's not a perfect carrot, but we can kind of em embrace that imperfection to it. And so thinking through how can you add in elements or photos or something that kind of backs up what you're kind of sharing in your design. Make you gra grab elements here that are as close to your brand elements as possible. Like for me, I often use a bit of a collage style. So I might try to find a more collage style element to add in here. Uh, but if you can't find that, even just something that's in your brand colors is still helpful. And lastly, I wanted to show you really briefly how you can create the seamless look in between two parts of a carousel without creating this full long carousel that you have to cut up. I've shared this before as well in a full tutorial. So I'm gonna link that here if you'd like a longer, more nuanced approach to this, but this is the quick version. So if you wanna insert a picture, so say I wanted this picture to go across both of my slides, I'm just gonna crop this picture down a little bit. And I like to personally use a background remover. You don't need to, but I'm gonna do that for mine just here now. So I'm gonna press background remover. This is a pro feature if you don't have Canva Pro. I highly recommend getting it. I've got a link below. Uh, if you're running a business, investing in Canva Pro is, is a business investment and I highly recommend it to all of my clients and students. And to say I added this image in here, if you're going to put an image across two slides, what you wanna do is make sure that you have most of yourself or most of the subject on one slide so it doesn't feel like awkwardly cut off. Like this kind of feels a bit awkward to have my face half half. It's like, oh, hello. We don't, we want to hold on that, that full kind of page. So bring, bring, bring whatever your subject is into the most into the image, but they have a little bit overlapping. Then what you want to do is just press R on your keyboard and insert a square. Again, I'm going over this quite quickly from the full tutorial. Make sure you click, click the link. Um, I'm going to press, I'm going to insert that square and just bring it right to the edge of my design. 
Then I'm going to select that square and also the picture of me by pressing shift on my keyboard. You can see I've got both of me and the square selected. Then I'm going to press copy. So command C or control C. Go to your second design or the design you want to pay your, your, your image to be carrying across into. Then press paste or right click and press paste. And then drag this across until the square is no longer visible. This is just letting me know where my image is going to get cut on the next design. So then once that's gone, you can see there's a tiny bit of it left. I'm just going to make sure I've got the square and my picture selected. I'm just going to arrow across to get it all gone. And now that square is gone and it's just me that's left here. And now these, this slide and this slide, once I delete this square, are going to perfectly carry across through those designs. Again, make sure you watch that full tutorial if you want to see that more, more in-depth version of that. And then once you're done, making sure that you're finished in that carousel by adding in a really great call to action for those next steps for your audience. Then you're going to want to hit share, download. And if you've got moving elements, make sure you download as an MP4 file. Or if you've got just a static kind of image, which is also totally fine, download that as a PNG file and share it to your Instagram account. You can share these to your phone or you can use Canva on your phone and download them to your phone. You can share via the Meta scheduling app or you can share via Canva as well. But making sure that you really focus on those tips that I've shared today. By having a really strong and large hook on that first slide, don't make this text really small really own that hook and really make it quite large so it captures someone's attention. What's relevant to them? Call that out and make any other text around that design quite small. Make sure that second slide is going to be something that calls a people in and captures their attention as well in case they haven't noticed you the first time they scrolled on. Tweak up your designs a little bit, but not too much on each of your slides and feeling free to add in a little bit of visual interest, whether that's creating a moving element, an, anim an animation, whether that's bringing in a line or something else that goes across all your slides or maybe, maybe even adding in a picture of yourself or an object to go across both of your slides as well. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Let me know if you try it yourself. And if you want to get this free Canva template, head to the link in the description below and you'll be able to get this template plus two other templates that I'm using in my own business and my clients use in their business to scale their businesses to 100K. I hope you love it. Can't wait to hear what you think and make sure you let me know in the comments below what your favorite carousel hack was today.